the simple reason why Catholics may not receive communion in Protestant worship is that intercommunion with Protestants is forbidden, both by the Catechism and Canon Law. Canon 844 states, Catholic ministers may licitly administer the sacraments to Catholic members of the Christian faithful only and likewise the latter may licitly receive the sacraments only from Catholic ministers. Whenever necessity requires or a genuine spiritual advantage commands it and provided the danger of error or indifferentism is avoided, Christ faithful for whom it is physically and morally impossible to approach a Catholic minister may lawfully receive the sacraments of penance, the Eucharist, and anointing of the sick from non-Catholic ministers in whose churches these sacraments are valid. The Catechism of the Catholic Church 1400 states, Ecclesial communities derived from the Reformation and separated from the Catholic Church have not preserved the proper reality of the Eucharistic mystery in its fullness, especially because of the absence of the sacrament of the Holy Hearts. It is for this reason that, for the Catholic Church, Eucharistic intercommunion with this community is not possible. Now, let's look a little deeper to understand why this is so important. The six main reasons why Catholics can't take communion in the Protestant Church. 1. Christ established one church and it subsists in its fullness in the Catholic faith. The Catholic Church views these denominations, Presbyterian, Lutheran, Episcopal, non-denominational, as ecclesial bodies of believers, Christians by virtue of baptism, that do not yet possess the fullness of the faith. Most importantly, they do not have sacraments, apart from marriage and baptism, because they do not have a valid priesthood and priesthood is required for the remaining five sacraments, including the Eucharist. Hence, their communion is, for Catholics, invalid as well as illicit. It isn't what it is supposed to be and it is forbidden for Catholics to receive it. Moreover, to do so, knowing fully well that the church forbids it may constitute a grave mortal sin that of blasphemy. 2. The church teaches one can be in communion with only one body at a time. If you are in communion with the Catholic Church, then you cannot be in communion with other ecclesial body. Remember that as a Catholic, you are married to Jesus Christ through his church, and one of the sacraments of that marriage is the Eucharist. Taking communion in another church is like cheating on your spouse. 3. When you accept communion, you are saying, I believe to all that that particular body is teaching. That is what communion is. Catholics do not believe what these other ecclesial bodies believe about Holy Communion and should not receive communion there. No matter what well-meaning Protestants say to encourage Catholic participation in communion services, Protestants view things very differently from Catholic and although their advice may be well-meaning, it is not the advice of the church. Protestants may be willing to have Catholics at their table, but Catholics are not free to participate. 4. When a Catholic receives communion in another ecclesial setting, it causes scandal. As much as we wish for Christian unity, we do not yet have it, and making it appear that we do sends a signal to those with weak faith or unfirm faith that it doesn't matter where one worships. 
is receiving a cracker and some grape juice or even bread and wine the same as receiving our Lord, body and blood, soul and divinity? Not to recognize that is the indifferentism that canon law warns against. The Eucharist is the source, summit and focus of our life in Christ. It communicates Christ to us and is a real and powerful means of grace. It should not be confused with the communion services of other traditions, given that God in the person of Jesus Christ established communion in the church and told us what it is and means in the bread of life discourse which ends with John chapter 6 verse 54. Catholics owe it to God to participate in the sacrament as and only as he sets out and he sets that out through the church to whom the sacrament was given, not a Protestant communion service, but the Catholic Mass. 5. The Episcopal denominations pose a particular problem because the liturgy closely resembles the form of Catholic liturgy and many of them will argue that they too believe in the real presence. In fact, some of the more orthodox Episcopal congregations are much more reverent towards their communion than Catholics are towards the Eucharist. Regardless of what later-day Episcopalians might think, the schematics who broke away from the Catholic Church and formed the Anglican Communion did not intend their communion as a real presence. Further, Pope Leo XIII in Apostolic Korea ruled very clearly that holy orders in the Episcopal ecclesial bodies are not valid. And 6. Canon law does provide for exceptions for receiving communion outside the Catholic Church, but only for those churches with a valid priesthood and in cases of necessity. Being neighborly at a Protestant wedding doesn't constitute necessity and Protestants do not have a valid priesthood. We are called as Catholics to witness to our faith. That means living visibly as Catholics, showing the world the grace that flows through Christ's church. Among those graces is the privilege of receiving Jesus Christ's body and blood, soul and divinity at Mass. Jesus Christ giving himself to us completely without reserve in the Eucharist. It is sometimes good in the interest of friendship and ecumenism to attend Protestant services with our loved ones, but what a witness it would be to refrain from communion and explain gently and lovingly why. The answer cannot be because the mean old church tells me I can't. We have the fullness of the faith. We have Jesus Christ truly and substantially present at every Mass and we receive Him into our very selves. We have the full complement of sacraments as channels to the grace we need in everyday life to help us on our journey to heaven. Isn't it the neighborly thing to do to invite others to come learn about our faith so that they too can make a declaration of faith and share the feast with us rather than the other way around? Think about it. God bless you.